Welcome to an Evolution Minute, more or less. Part 2, Mammal Fossils Found in the Wrong Layers We often hear that various fossils are found in the wrong layers, but often not what that means. Why is something the wrong layer? Who says it's the wrong layer? I'm going to use an example of this article, Fact Check, Did Bill Nye Tell a Huge Lie About the Fossil Layers? by Michael Snyder in February of last year. This can be found in a number of sites. I'm not sure what the original source of this article was, but I was linked to it from Facebook at a site called The Truth, exposing the truth one story at a time. Let's look at their claims. I say there, because although this was written by one person, as you can see, apparently a lot of people agree. It says here, not only that, a whole host of modern creatures have been found in dinosaur rock layers and the references an article by Calvin Smith. Let's look at the Calvin Smith article. It is at Creation Ministries International and is titled The So-Called Age of Dinosaurs, Why There Never Was a Land Before Time Millions of Years Ago. Calvin says, Many still think that mammals and dinosaurs, for example, never coexisted, or if they did, it was for only a short period when only small, shrew-like mammals were present. However, the facts show otherwise. Gradually, more and more evidence is being discovered that is consistent with what we know from the Bible, namely that dinosaurs and other creatures all lived and died at the same time. To the surprise of many, ducks, squirrels, platypus, beaver-like and badger-like creatures have all been found in dinosaur-era rock layers along with bees, cockroaches, frogs, and pine trees. Most people don't picture a T-Rex walking along with a duck flying overhead, but that's what the so-called Dino-era fossils would prove. I'm going to ignore the whole many still think, and to the surprise of many, and most people, parts of this statement, except to point out that many and most are rather amorphous terms often used to mislead or add an unwarranted gravitas to claims. Let's look at that last paragraph again. To the surprise of many, ducks, squirrels, platypus, beaver-like and badger-like creatures have all been found in dinosaur-era rock layers along with bees, cockroaches, frogs, and pine trees. Most people don't picture a T-Rex walking along with a duck flying overhead, but that's what the so-called Dino-era fossils would prove. Calvin conveniently gives us references to the ducks, squirrels, platypus, beaver-like and badger-like creatures he mentions. I'm going to look at these starting with ducks. The reference for which is Cretaceous Duck Ruffles Feathers, an article from the BBC News. And here it is. Ducks may have been paddling about in primeval swamps when T-Rex was king of the dinosaurs, scientists have announced in the journal Nature. Fossil remains of a duck that lived 70 million years ago appear to belong to a relative of modern ducks and geese. The partial skeleton, discovered on Vega Island, western Antarctica, is likely to stir up controversy. Many scientists believe modern bird lineages did not evolve until the end of the dinosaur's reign. The paper being referred to is in Nature, which I fortunately have access to, titled Definitive Fossil Evidence for the Extant Avian Radiation in the Cretaceous by Clark et al. From the paper, long-standing controversy surrounds the question of whether living bird lineages emerged after non-avian dinosaur extinction at the Cretaceous Tertiary, KT, boundary or whether these lineages coexisted with other dinosaurs and passed through this mass extinction event. Please note the phrases long-standing controversy and living bird lineages. Contrary to Calvin Smith's to the surprise of many, one has to wonder what many is referring to. Clearly not many scientists. An editor's summary from Nature sums things up nicely. A rare fossil of a bird from Antarctica flies into the eye of a storm. The fossil, believed to be a close relative of modern ducks and geese, lived towards the end of the Cretaceous about 70 million years ago. The suggestion that the line that leads to today's birds can be identified as distinct from other dinosaurs this early will be controversial. Until now, fossil evidence has indicated that modern birds evolved only after the dinosaurs became extinct 65 million years ago. Even though evidence from molecules suggests that modern orders of birds existed well before that date, this evidence has been hotly contested. Now you can examine the actual fossil digitally at Digimorph. I will leave links for this and to other references I use. He does mention that ducks have been found, Calvin that is, yet the article only refers to one duck. Well, I suppose it had friends, other species I mean. So did Bill Nye tell a huge lie? 
The original article mentions a whole host of modern creatures in referencing the excerpt from Calvin Smith's article. Problem is that this fossil is not a modern duck. Oh, okay, that's a duckling. This is a modern duck. Er, wait a minute. Okay, now that's better. The fossil being referred to is related to modern ducks and geese, as the paper makes clear. It is not a modern duck. Lots of animals have ancestors and distant relatives that can be seen in the fossil record. Many, like this crocodile here, closely resemble these ancestral types. But modern crocodiles, even though they and other animals and plants are often referred to as living fossils, aren't the same and have changed over time. I will link this article in The Scientist titled The Falsity of Living Fossils, which points out that new studies of tadpole shrimp and other organisms show that the term living fossil is inaccurate and misleading. The term living fossil should be discarded for these reasons. I want to quickly look at the other four references, the one about the squirrel, the platypus, the beaver, and the badger. Number one, from the journal Nature, a Mesozoic gliding mammal from northeastern China. Gliding flight has independently evolved many times in vertebrates. Direct evidence of gliding is rare in fossil records and is unknown in mammals from the Mesozoic era. Here we report a new Mesozoic mammal from Inner Mongolia, China, that represents a previously unknown group. Characterized by highly specialized insectivorous dentition and a sizable patagium, that's a flying membrane, for gliding flight. The patagium is covered with dense hair and supported by an elongated tail and limbs. The latter also bear many features adapted for arboreal life. This discovery extends the earliest record of gliding flight for mammals to at least 70 million years earlier in geological history and demonstrates that early mammals were diverse in their locomotor strategies and lifestyles. They had experimented with an aerial habit at about the same time as, if not earlier than, when birds endeavored to exploit the sky. The taxonomy of this new animal in Wikipedia shows it as belonging to the order Eutriconodonta. The dagger means that this order is extinct. Squirrels, on the other hand, belong to the order Rodentia. This is not a squirrel. Two. Next is Swimming with Dinos from the Museum Victoria. The article says, Analysis using a high-resolution CT scanner in Texas, USA, has revealed that one of the fossil jaws retrieved from flat rocks near Inverloch, thought to be a monotreme or egg-laying mammal, is actually a close relative of the platypus. Note, close relative. Further, it says, Originally from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, the paper is the oldest platypus and its bearing on divergence timing of the platypus and echidna clades. The PDF is available free for anyone wanting to read it. This is not a modern platypus, but an extinct relative. You can also examine this fossil at Digimorph. Three, the early aquatic mammal links to a swimming mammalia form from the middle Jurassic and echomorphological diversification of early mammals. Abstract. A docodontin mammalia form from the Middle Jurassic of China possesses swimming and burrowing skeletal adaptations and some dental features for aquatic feeding. It is the most primitive taxon in the mammalian lineages known to have fur and has a broad, flattened, partly scaly tail analogous to that of modern beavers. We infer that docodontins were semi-aquatic, convergent to the modern platypus and many Cenozoic placentals. This fossil demonstrates that some mammalia forms, or proximal relatives to modern mammals, developed diverse locomotory and feeding adaptations and were echomorphologically different from the majority of generalized small terrestrial mesozoic mammalian insectivores. Later in the paper, it says, The broad and scaly tail of Castor rocata was similar to that of the modern beaver Castor canadiensis, a semi-aquatic placental mammal well adapted to swimming and Based on its relatively large size, swimming body structure, and anterior molar specialized for piscivorous feeding, Castor rocata was a semi-aquatic carnivore similar to the modern river otter. The beaver belongs to the order Rodentia. The otter belongs to the order Carnivora. Castor rocata belongs to the order Docodonta. This is neither a beaver nor an otter, but something completely different. Four. Last, we have the dinosaur-eating mammal discovered in China. The reference is the National History Museum site. The original article is in Nature and is called Large Mesozoic Mammals Feed on Young Dinosaurs. 
Mesozoic mammals are commonly portrayed as shrew or rat-sized animals that were mainly insectivorous, probably nocturnal, and lived in the shadow of dinosaurs. The largest known Mesozoic mammal represented by substantially complete remains is Repetomammus robustus, a triconodont mammal from the lower Cretaceous of Lianang, China. An adult individual of R. robustus was the size of a Virginia opossum. Here we report a new species of the genus, represented by a skeleton with most of the skull and postcranium preserved in articulation. The new species is 50% larger than R. robustus in skull length. In addition, stomach contents associated with a skeleton of R. robustus reveal remains of a juvenile Psittacosaurus, a ceratopsian dinosaur. Our discoveries constitute the first direct evidence that some triconodont mammals were carnivorous and fed on small vertebrates, including young dinosaurs, and also show that Mesozoic mammals had a much greater range of body sizes than previously known. We suggest that Mesozoic mammals occupy diverse niches and that some large mammals probably competed with dinosaurs for food and territory. From Nature News, Repentomammus giganticus, as the creature has been christened, was more than a meter long, about the size of a large dog. However, it would have more closely resembled a badger. Note, meter long. That is large for an ancient mammal, but hardly gigantic. If you look at the Wikipedia entry for the evolution of mammals, you will see, since Jeremiah, the earliest known Eutherian, lived 160 million years ago, this new mammal is 30 million years younger than Jeremiah, so this is nothing new. For example, if we look at the book Organic Evolution Considered by Alfred Fairhurst, published in 1897, on page 129 it says, the oldest known mammals were in the Triassic. Looking at the UC Berkeley site, we see that the Triassic was 248 to 206 million years ago. So at least 119 years ago, it was known that mammals lived with the giant dinosaurs. Duck is a distant relative. Squirrel is not a squirrel. Platypus is a distant relative. Beaver is not a beaver. Badger is not a badger. Makes Calvin Smith at all five-time losers. I bet the bees, cockroaches, frogs, and pine trees would fare as well had there been any references. Thanks for watching, and Viva Evolution!